Okay, so before I start, I just want to ask you one question. All right, so I just want to request, you know, stand up the 8 India employees here, please. Wow, that's a really a bigger crowd here. Thank you, thank you. I think, you know, all the employees from Chiefs, you know, not only from Chief Data Office, I can see that from all of the divisions. So, you know, thank you, to, thank you for coming over here. And uh, I'm going to do the, the last talk. So maybe I just start with my journey a little bit uh, to give you guys a little bit of an introduction about me. So it is, uh, you know, about 20 years. Uh, I born and brought up in South India, and I came to Bangalore to look for a job. Um, I didn't get, so, you know, those days, um, you know, uh, there is no job portal. Probably it was there a little bit, but again, you have to take the resumes, go to the, all the companies, and look for a job. And I didn't get an internship either. So I picked up a project myself, and I did a project, and I submitted in my university to get my master's. But anyway, so I came here to Bangalore, but again, I got an idea that, okay, let me go out to other cities and look for a job. So I went to Pune, and I got a job there, okay? So it's about a one year I worked there. Um, always I have the tendency that, or a mindset, I would say, I want to travel. I want to travel all around the world and meet different professionals and really learn from them. Uh, because I'm coming from a, one small city uh, in South India. So I went to Pune, I worked there for about a year, there the opportunity knocks, and I get an opportunity to go to South Africa and Johannesburg, and stay there and work for a, one private banking uh, in IT side. So about seven years I lived and worked there. Again, it's a new language, new people, a new culture, uh, but I know it's all about the mindset, I think, to just go along with them, learn, and just pivot your life. Right, so that's pretty much what I have done. Again, my journey was uh, like a developer in IT side of it. I was used to do a lot of Java applications and things like that. But my journey, you know, about seven years, I lived there. Then again, the, the thing is, the karma, I can say that, it's, you know, taking me back. I'm coming back to Bangalore, okay? So trying to settle down in, in India, but again, another opportunity knocks. And this time, you know, the opportunity is coming from US. So in the city of Phoenix, they are calling me to you know, come and work with them in their back office, the IT side of it. So again, I'm going, right? New culture, new people, and the way people interact there, and it's technology savvy and, and totally different atmosphere for me. And again, I'm standing there learning and working along with the people and improving my knowledge. All these times, I'm telling you what are the learnings that I have done. I never kept it with me, so I always try to pass it to others. Uh, maybe I can also inspire others, you know, uh, because I'm just coming from the small village. I never experienced all those things, whatever I had. It's about a 10 years that I'm staying in the U.S., and all these 10 years is with the AT&T, right? So my journey started, I was like a developer, and uh, obviously architecture, designing, implementations, and uh, into the data and AI technologies. You know, that is my bread and butter now, and now I'm leading the chief data office in India. So that's my, you know, small story. So with that, you know, I just want to jump into what at and is doing, what Chief Data Office is doing, right? So I just want to give you overall, you know, high picture. Um, like Andy mentioned, about 615 petabytes of average network data that flows across. So the data is there, but you can't touch the data just like that, right? So you need to curate the data and bring some sort of insights. Then we can put it in the business people at the right time, at the right hands. Then they can actually make a good decisions. So the actionable insights, it's not just coming from the raw data, so you have to do a lot of data engineering. So you can see in the middle, that is our enterprise data technology. That kind of brings all the data from all over that make it available for the data scientists to work on it. So now I'll talk about our traditional AI. So the purpose of this you know, work, whatever we do, we want to democratize this data and the AI to throw the company, right? So the chief data office, our functionality is not to just create these things, and also we want to make it available for rest of this organization in at and in a self-service manner so that actually they can go and do themselves, right? So that's why we call it AI as a service. That is our traditional ML and AI platform. And there are multiple use cases, you know, came out of this uh, traditional data science methods that what we have done, you know, right from, you know, dispatch optimization and a fraud detection and supply chain insights, you know, network planning and uh, optimization, and there is a lot of optimization, uh, automation stuff. 
So these are all the some of the use cases that I'm talking about. You can think of, you know, from a data science point, point of view, it could be a classification, it could be an optimization, it could be a forecasting, right? N number of variations in those things that we can able to do. It's hundreds of use cases out there that we have accomplished. It's not only, like I said, in Chief Data Office, throughout the at and right? So now the description is, uh, we all know that it's Gen AI, right? There are many people talked about uh, chat GPT, but in at and we have to build a secured environment, right? So we can't just go and use OpenAI or anything like open source matter. So we have a private tenant where those models are housed, where we are able to actually interact. And now we want to actually build the enterprise secure platform so that you know, the rest of the company can use it. So that's why you know, we pivoted ourselves, it's okay, the Gen.A is doing a really good job, but let's take it to the next level and how we created our own platform, we call it like an Ask at &T. So you can think of anything there, right? I think Sonu mentioned, she worked on contract analytics. You know, as a contract manager, you want to upload your contract and ask some questions, and you want to know some terms mentioned in the contract, right? And also, there are some databases out there Right, it's not just a relational database, it's a NoSQL database, sometimes it's a big data, but still you want to interact. But as a, you know, a business analyst, not necessarily that person is you know, very technical. Maybe the person can write maybe in SQL, but the person can't even you know, write more than that. So how do we actually enable those sort of citizen uh, developers or analysts to be part of this entire journey? So Chief Data Office, we created this Ask at &T. So Ask Docs, Ask Data, even to know the lineage of the data, right? Once the data comes in there, then you start cleanse the data and you derive it with the other data sets. It's definitely taken a different form. So you want to know the lineage where the data is coming from. That will kind of help you, right? Similar fashion, you know, I know for sure all of us, we run uh, the operations, right? So when we talk about the operations, uh, we have to pro provide you know, great support when the application, something happens. So we always try to find what is the problem? Very fast, and then we want to remediate the problem, right? So Ask Ops is something that is really, you know, helping our uh, production support engineers. They can troubleshoot the problem very fast. And once, once they find it, you know, they can actually fix it also very fast. So then Ask Image, and it actually goes on, you know. Uh, but let me just now dive in and talk to you guys of a traditional AI method a little bit. Um, I, like I told you, my talk is about democratizing AI, right? So you can understand here in this, looking at this picture, there are create AI. Once you create the AI, actually you deploy them. So it's available in your for service. And then actually monitor them, right? These are the three big you know, uh, uh, sections out there if you really want to build a machine learning model. So let me go from first, create AI, right? So that's the first, first job is to discover. You, know, you need to go and find the data. So once you get the right amount of the data that you're looking for, then you can actually start put up you know, some sort of a features. So you can derive those features, then actually you can build the machine learning model. And I would say that mostly 60% you know, of the data scientist time or a data engineer, they actually you know, live in this space uh, because this is a very you know, important step. And if they actually find the right features and they can actually create the you know, great models. But you see all these things, if you look at the bottom of this slide, there is always people ask questions because data science is all about asking questions. Sanch mentioned ask questions. Even data scientists also need to ask questions. Everyone needs to ask questions. So the personas, if you look at it in that create AI section, it's a data engineer, data scientist, and even the compliance and privacy person is involved, right? So am I touching the right data? Do I have the right access to the data, right? And also you can see that whatever we do, we need to be just building a responsible AI in a proper ethical fashion, right? It goes across all of our create AI or we are just deploying it or serving, doesn't really matter. That responsibility needs to be there, including a data engineer, data scientist, and all the personas. So now talking about deploy and serve AI. So you can think of once we build the model, you want to take it to production. So you need an ML engineer, and you're going to deploy it in some sort of an environment. Then you need your DevOps person as well, right? So once you have them, you want to insert the model part of some visualization. So you need a UI developer, you need a backend developer to hook it up. So now you can actually you know, use the application which has been powered by the machine learning model or AI, right? Once it's done, it's deployed. Obviously, you want to monitor it. 
you don't want to, you know, the model is drifting or the features are drifting. Uh, and always, you know, the challenges in the corporate because the some upstream system changes data type or uh, the value got changed. It's always surprised. So we need to monitor them always. It's not just deploy and forget the model. So this is a way of traditional way of we create this, you know, machine learning model. Um, but okay, it looks like lengthy process, right? Uh, but at the same time, you see the people who are involved in making one machine learning model, uh, you know, data engineer, data scientist, all these people are needed. Without them, we can't just create the model. So in Chief Data Office, we look at ourselves, okay, I created this as a data scientist or all these personas, but how we can make it faster for the rest of our, uh, you know, business units at at and So we came up with a concept called AI as a service in a self-servicing manner. People can use the technology, for example, if we create a model, we just don't create the model. We actually put them in a platform and kind of we crowdsource this to the people with a proper security and privacy in place. And actually they can go and you know, beat each other. You know, they can actually come up with a new features or new data and maybe they can get a great lift of the model. Not only that, also some robots is running in the behind the back. So you're kind of fighting with the robots. At the end of the day, what we want, we want the best model that goes to the production. That's why we do that, you know, kind of a gamification. And the second thing, all these features, all these features, you know, it's really kind of a gold assets for us, right? Machine learning assets. So we want to keep it in, we create a platform called Feature Store, and we keep all those features there. So now, you know, someone created it today, and down the line in two years, someone also can reuse those features. You know, it's not like a lost. A proper, with, the, with the proper version control and all those things, it's really serving the, you know, good purpose. Then monitoring standpoint, we also need to see the model is not drifting. It's doing actually it's supposed to do. So we also have internal platform. We just monitor each and every data point, each and every feature that goes into the model and the actions that comes out of the model. So we kind of monitor that as well. So we have a product even built in uh, inside in at and So these are all the platforms actually really helping us to go fast. And not only us, the rest of the at and people also can use it in order to build this sort of uh, you know, MLM models. So moving on, talking about the Gen AI, you know, like I said, you know, we have a, an enterprise secure platform, Ask at and um, There I just mentioned about three use cases, but you can see that there are so many use cases are coming every day from our business units. And it's a real you know, description, but at the same time, we have to deliver this technology you know, in a responsible and ethical way to our end users, right? So that's why you see whatever we did for our traditional AI and ML models, similar fashion, we take care of our Gen AI platform and the way we deliver the Gen AI use cases as well. But if you actually look at the right side, you know, look at the personas that actually needed in order to build this sort of a, uh, you know, platform, we have, we need a prompt engineer, we need a data scientist, we need a data engineer, similar fashion, we need a UI and backend developer to put together, right? and then production support engineer, and also the compliance and privacy person. Pretty much you have seen all the personas that you have seen in the previous slide, it's also needed here. So what I'm trying to say is like, we have huge responsibility in at and to deliver this sort of a platform so we can go fast and deliver all the beautiful insights that our business need at the right time so that they can take an action, actionable uh, you know, decisions but we have to want to do it in a, in a particular fashion because at and created these guiding principles because we believe, strongly believe in creating this AI for the people, by the people, and it has to be responsible and it's a secure and ethical, right? And then what happens, this particular thing also became our policy, right? So it's not just a principles anymore, it's our policy. So that's what we practice every day in at and and Chief Data Office. And one more thing I want to mention here, because you saw the many personas that in both the slides, right? Either I'm making a traditional AI or a gen AI, but because I always believe in data science is a team sport, okay? Here in Chief Data Office in India, we have different teams, all the personas, what you see here, everybody's out there. We all work together and create the magic that's needed for our customers and get a great satisfaction in a customer satisfaction. So with that, I just want to give uh, three points that I kind of took, you know, uh, learned all my life in all these 20 years, going across all these countries, meeting different people. Uh, one thing that I kept, uh, you know, telling me all the time 
you know, think big. Okay, dream big, think big. That's what I always try to say. Doesn't matter where you are coming from. Doesn't matter what you do. But there is nothing wrong. You think big, right? That's what I tell to myself. And then be the team player. You just saw the team sport, right? There's so many people over there. So you should learn how to be a team player uh, in to make you know, that wonderful machine learning models. But all these two things, it can only you know, come if you have an attitude, if you have a winning mindset. So the mindset for me is very important. Every time the challenge is thrown at me, I turn them into an opportunity. It's up to me, right? So that mindset is really needed. You want to really think big, you need a great mindset. You want to be rich, you need a great mindset. So the mindset is very important for me. That is a sort of a, you know, my journey. If I'm able to do something good and have really fun at at and Chief Data Office, definitely you all can, right? So we have, I see like so many people coming from different colleges there. Um, you know, we're gonna hang out here after even the talking. i uh, love to have a talk with you guys and help you. You saw the different roles that what we have. Um, so let's you know, gather after the talk also. Thank you.